Ibercross 24 hours after announcing your retirement. It must be sad seeing the boys out there training in, and you're not part of it. Yeah, it's a surreal, uh, surreal environment to be in, to be honest with you. I came in for a bit of physio and uh, maybe lift a few weights and couldn't help myself but walk out and watch the boys train. It's, uh, it's a strange feeling, I won't lie to you, it's very odd. Uh, but it's nice to see, you know, the boys, you know, it just goes to show the boys are training in sunshine and uh, smiles on their faces and that's what I very much loved about being a part of this club and will continue to love being a part of this club. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great atmosphere, it's a great environment to be in and, and long may it continue. Yesterday you and I had a chat about it all, yeah. real tough times, but when you see the amount of uh, best wishes, goodwill, message, you must be uh, pretty touched by that. Oh, overwhelmed last night, genuinely. Last night was probably the, um, obviously I've known for the long, you know, a little bit longer than it, before it was announced and um, it didn't really kick in until probably last night when it was announced and it was in print and uh, my family obviously spoke to the family and stuff and from four o'clock yesterday afternoon when it was announced to still this morning you know people sending messages thousands of messages and it, it really is uh, very humbling and um, you know, I could get quite emotional about it but it was um, it, was, it really was appreciated all the messages of support and uh, it's a real kind personal messages and, and not just Chiefs fans is it no yeah, it was all over. yeah so nice. from 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 Bedford Blues days and it's amazing you don't the old saying you don't really appreciate what you've got until it is gone and um, you know I've met, I've met some fantastic people some fantastic friends that I'll take for life and um, you know, I've really, really been blessed to, to have the opportunity that I've been um, to meet guys, the stewards, the, the, the backroom staff, um, fans alike across the city and everywhere I've gone on a journey, you know, it's um, they've played a massive part of it and I can't thank those guys enough. You talked about the last four years in particular here at the Chiefs being very special for you, getting to the top end of the game, Premiership uh, and going out like you did. Yeah, it's something that you work very hard for to be, uh, I got an opportunity and I'll never hide away from it, I got given an opportunity here as a championship player, as a lot of players do, um, the first year in the Premiership and you, you kind of always want to be a Premiership rugby player throughout your whole career and then when you actually are in that environment you think, wow, am I, am I good enough to be in this environment? And then you get a season down the line and you think, wow, you know, I've, I've performed well here, I can, I can handle this and this is the dream come true then. And it's a shame that it's been kind of taken away probably three or four years too early for me. Um, I very much foresaw myself having another three or four years at it. Um, and like you say, but what a fantastic way to go out in a, an LV Cup final, having beaten Bath as well. And the memories, you know, they're, they're two memories obviously that stick out at the minute because they're quite raw in my mind because they're quite close to, to the retirement date. And, um, you know, those memories that, that, that will live with me forever. I'll probably look back in six months' time or 12 months' time and they will cushion the blow of the retirement. But at the minute, it's obviously still very raw for me and uh, it's a shame. But listen, I've got no time to be down in the dumps about it. Everybody at the club and from, that's from the girls in the office to, to you guys as well in the media, they've just been fantastic for me and I can't, I can't, I can't be thankful enough for that. Well, go on away that first game. It seems a long time ago, but so many experiences, so many memories along the way, Chris. That's right, yeah. And I'm sure um, the thousands of travelling tribe uh, um, that, that went out to Toulon and, and Bourguan know that I'm probably uh, a relatively well-known tourist and enjoy a beer and a, a good laugh with the, all the fans and stuff after the game and that's that's something that's very important here in the club. Um, you know, we're, we're not on a pedestal as players, we should be able to interact with players and, and that's what's special about this club. You know, you go up in the bar after a game, whether you've lost or won and people are just happy to talk to you and um, you really are blessed to be able to be in that kind of environment. And, and you know those tours like Bourguin and Stade Francais and Toulon and you know there's, there's very few 27 year olds yeah France <laughs> France in general is just amazing and uh, there's very few people that my age that have been able to say they've done that and I'm uh, truly blessed with that. A lot of people will say well why don't you give it a little crack and see how you go but when specialists say what they say to you Chris you have to take that words of wisdom. That's and... right yeah there's a, there's a reality to it as well obviously having the neck surgery last season um, and then getting through the end of last season and training through a pre-season and from the very first game against Northampton this season you know my neck has it's been struggling I, my arm hurts I've had to have an awful lot of painkillers in order to play uh, but that's what you do because you love the sport you do and you're very lucky to be in that sport. Um, but like you say, when a specialist says this is too dangerous now because you've got to stop it, it's too close to your spinal cord and you, you know, you're one week away from being paralysed, you just think, well, you know, it, there's a long life to live after rugby. You know? Like I said, baby whitehead on the way and the wife needs looking after, so uh, who's going to cook her dinner for her you know, if, uh, if, I can't, if I can't do it? In terms of the future, though, you're very much settled in Exeter. You've said you, you'd be keen to stay in the area and... and who knows what where it'll take you now? One hundred percent. Yeah, it's funny. My parents and Sarah's parents both said, "Oh, you know, well, you'll obviously be working your way back to the Midlands." And no, Exeter's home for us now, and um, we love it here. You know, we brought down here, and it's just a, a beautiful place. People are so friendly and uh, prepared to talk to you, and um, 
the opportunities that me being a rugby player for the Exeter Chief has probably opened is massive and something that I'd be foolish to walk away from. Um, the lifestyle down here is great and you know we've got no intention of moving anywhere and unfortunately the South West has inherited a couple of Midlanders. One final thought from Chris Whitehead. Thank you very much for all of your support that you've uh, you've all given me over the, the, the seasons. Um, like I said, I can't say it enough, really blessed to have been a part of this amazing journey uh, and I'm convinced that Exeter Chief is going to be uh, long within my memories for the rest of my life. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Whitehead, Exeter Chiefs hooker. <laughs> yep. Hi, I'm Chris Whitehead, Exeter Chiefs hooker. Part of being a hooker in rugby means you're responsible for throwing the line out. All right. Hi, I'm Chris Whitehead, Exeter Chiefs hooker. Part of the responsibilities of being an Exeter Chiefs Yep. Yep. Hi, I'm Chris Whitehead, Exeter Chiefs hooker. Part and parcel of being an Exeter Chiefs hooker means you're responsible for throwing the ball into the line out. That's good. Do you want to do another one? Or? Yeah.